Hello, it is Sunday, February 19th, 2023. I'm Chris Fremo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Sunday puzzle today, so a long, uh, well, a big, big grid. Hopefully, hopefully not too long, actually, because I don't have all the time in the world today. So um, should be should be fine, but we'll see if we can move through this crossword at a reasonable pace. And this jumbo-sized Sunday grid has been brought to us, or today's Daily Solve edition about it, has been brought to us by Bradley Pirtle, Alex, Laura Saxon, and as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign for their generous support in sustaining this channel and bringing up this, this series. I do very much appreciate that. Thank you to all of my benefactors and to all of my patrons more broadly. If you'd like to become one of them, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve or in a link in the description field underneath the video. As a benefactor, you'll get access to the, well, you'll get sent in the mail. <laughs> um, daily solve, let's check the crosses mug. And all patrons, uh, will get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week this week. That included another acrostic puzzle and another mini puzzle speed solve. More bonus puzzles coming soon as well. And uh, again, thank you to all of those who are patrons. I do very much appreciate it. Um, it keeps this whole thing going. And thanks also if you've subscribed to the channel. Please do that if you've not yet gotten around to it. And you can join the Daily Solve Discord chat server, uh, chat community in the link in the description field underneath the video as well. So uh, check that out if you've not done so. It's a nice place. All right, let's get on to today's actual puzzle. This was constructed by Rebecca Goldstein, who has constructed around half a dozen puzzles uh, for the Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start. Oh, and, it's, and it has a title, of course, as a Sunday puzzle, a Sunday-themed puzzle with a name, Simile, <laughs> Simile Irresistible. That's good. So we'll probably be constructing similes in this crossword in some way. We'll just have to find out how. So let's start solving. Gaslight. Well, it's not a pilot light. Uh, neon. Gaslight. Feels though it would be more likely to be the other way around as in light gas, a gas used for light or something. I'm not sure. Table salt to a chemist. NaCl. Maybe it is neon. Let's try it and see. So NaCl, sodium chloride, is table salt to a chemist. That's a chemical symbol for it, obviously. One of the Hearst magazines. Is L one of the Hearst magazines? Possibly published by Hearst. International group headquartered in Vienna. Is OPEC headquartered in Vienna for some reason? Ciao, ciao, ciao. Alpo? Oh, because chow chow is a breed of dog and and um, chow means food. So, right. I was thinking this must have something to do with, with pet food, Alpo, but, but I couldn't quite parse it. Why are there three rather than two? And yes, it's because chow chow is itself a breed. All right. So this probably is OPEC. I, I, think, that, I think that is correct. And comedian Trevor, Trevor Noah is a comedian and the host of The Daily Show. Um. Okay, ingredient in un cortado. Uh, leche, so that would be milk. A cortado is, um, um, you know, it's, it's a small espresso drink with, with less milk than you'd get in a cappuccino or a latte or something like that. Um, and leche is the milk. All right, bus, question mark. So I'm assuming that, yes, I bet, I bet this is going to be a theme answer because I, my eyes were just caught by a few other similar examples of relatively long clue with just a single uh, word or a relatively long answer, I should say, with a single word clue followed by a question mark indicating some kind of pun or wordplay. So I suspect those will be our similes or whatever they are. Clean, oh, bus clean as a... So simile um, is like a metaphor, but when you, you when you specifically say the thing is like a this or as a this or whatever you're calling that out. Whereas with a metaphor, at least in theory, you don't. Although I think in sort of generally speaking in English, we also refer to metaphor. We, we use metaphors to, to sort of refer to both um, very often, but similes must require the like or as comparison. 
Okay, so a bus is... Oh, maybe bus is in clean your plates or something? Clean as a whistle or clean... I don't know. I can't quite see it. I feel like it's something. It's going to be something dealing with maybe cleaning dishes or something. I'm not sure. TV brand. What's a three-letter TV brand? RCA? That would work with clean as. Spa garment. A robe. Presidential pet that sports an afro. I'm not sure what that's getting at. Pet being in quotation marks makes me think this is some sort of reference that I'm not. You know, I'm not sure what that's what that is. You're embarrassing me. And muscles targeted by curls are uh, biceps, bicep curls. Okay, brings in earns money. Okay, so this looks like clean as something. Presidential pet. Oh, a chia. Presidential pet that sport, sprouts an afro. A chia. What's the presidential bit? Chia Nixon? I have no idea. What is this? What is going on here? So chia pets are the, um, they're, they're sort of, it's pottery. It's sort of a, a little sculpture, a little pottery sculpture with holes in it through which the sort of chia plant grows and it looks like curly hair essentially or fur depending on what's being what or who is being depicted Pre why is it presidential i'm not sure what that is getting at okay blank across the board perfect score tens across the board perfect score in say the olympics you're embarrassing me oh stop okay that was more straightforward than i made it looks to pick things up looks to pick things up Not sure. Took five. And some classic Chuck Taylor All Stars. High tops? Are those referring to All Stars shoes? High tops. That's that's. Am I am I remembering properly the name for that kind of sneakers? I think I must be. I don't re I don't recognize Chuck Taylor All Stars specifically, but Converse All Stars. Is a, is a brand of shoe, and high tops are a kind of shoe. So I'm, I'm thinking this is probably the answer. Hosts as a, as at a penthouse, penthouse. So has up, maybe? If you host someone at a penthouse, you necessarily bring them up because the penthouse is the highest floor of the building. Can't win them all. I lost, maybe? Is it as simple as that? Not sure. United... All as one or something, or all one. Peel, here's another one of our theme clues. Second hand, a second hand item is used. And disposable sock in a shoe store. Not sure, does that have a name? It must. Can't win them all. This does look like I lose or I lost. Affixed in a scrapbook, say. Glued, glued it in. Oh, a ped. I think I have seen that that language before. Disposable shock in a, in a sock in a shoe store. There we go. Ped. Obviously related to um, the prefix for foot. Okay. United. All. Yeah, it could be all one. Peel. Sound. The peel of a bell. The sound of a bell. Posterior. Hind. As in posterior legs. Hind legs of an animal. United. Oh, allied. There we go. We were united. We were allied. We were together. Took five. Nested? Netted? There's something... I mean, took five. It, it, it looks like you went on break or something. That's what it took five sounds like to me. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to leave that for now. Maybe I have something else wrong. Maybe one of these is incorrect. Today, co-host caught B. Oh, I've, I've seen this before, and I didn't know what it. I didn't recognize it once, but then I came up again. Hoda, Hoda caught B. Is that? I, I don't. I hope I'm not mispronouncing her name. Um, but yes, television television host. 
Okay, looks to pick things up. Shao shops. So why is took five nested? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's rested. Clear. Oh, bus clear as crystal. Why? Why is that? Oh, as in maybe you're bussing the sort of crystal glasses? So to bus your sort of dishware is to clear as you might crystal. And so in other words, <laughs> clear it from the table as the crystal glasses are being cleared from the table. But also it is clearly alluding to the, the general idiom, clear as crystal, that you would say sort of metaphorically to mean something is, is, has been explained perfectly well. Is that what's going on? I can't quite tell if I'm completely properly understanding this. But I think this is probably the answer. And I think I think that's how it works. Yiddish laments could be ois, oi, you'd say in Yiddish to indicate your kind of lament or frustration. Muscles targeted by planks are your abs. We had your biceps and your abs in here. Large container could be a vat. Cry from someone who's disheveled. And Hebrew word for spring. Oh, I'm not sure. So, oh, Chia Obama, I guess. I guess, okay, I guess there is a... Chia Obama. I wonder if they make Chia pets of all the presidents. I bet they do. Or at least many of them. Cry from someone who's disheveled. I'm a mess. There we go. Esteem could be value. You hold someone in high esteem, high value. And the Hebrew word for spring, oh, Aviv. Okay, I didn't, I didn't know that, but um, there we go. Subatomic particles. Muons. Um, I couldn't explain to you precisely what a muon is relative to other subatomic particles, but I recognize that it exists. And we had the useful bits solved in the crosses. Ending with clip or slip, clip-ons or slip-ons, as in clip-on ties or slip-on shoes, for instance. 23andMe facility. So 23andMe is the DNA testing um, website service. So D DNA labs, presumably, they operate for that purpose. Replay technology, replay tech, slow mo, and technology being abbreviated to tech also suggests we should abbreviate slow motion to slow mo. Big Ben hours. So, this is presumably referring to time here in the UK where Big Ben, the bell, might bong, and uh, Greenwich Mean Time. Um, has a, there are a few different sort of ways you can refer to essential, I mean, as far as uh, we normal people are concerned. There are a few different ways you can refer to that time standard, but Greenwich, Greenwich Mean Time is the, the most famous and most used one, probably. Uh, named for the Greenwich Mean Line in, in Greenwich here in London. And photosynthesize is something as, so green as grass or something? Green as grass. Is that a phrase? I think so photosynthesize. So, I mean, obviously what would be going on here with green as grass is you're saying for something to become green in the way that grass does through photosynthesis, um, through absorbing the sunlight and converting it to, you know, energy and whatever exactly goes on in photosynthesis, but it relates to the chlorophyll, which makes the plants green and so on. So again, no biologist can't, couldn't explain to you exactly every nuance of that, but um, uh, but I think that's what's going on. So to photosynthesize is to green as grass does. And then there must also just be a phrase green as grass, which doesn't for some reason ring a bell to me. I suppose it's still possible I have something wrong here, but we'll, we'll find out with the crosses. Teachers' teachings are lessons. Hutzpah is guts. You've, you've got hutzpah, you've got guts maybe. Commuter option could be rail. You could commute via rail. Um, little energizers say. Um, hmm, this looks a little bit strange, doesn't it? Little energizers say. What does that mean? And why is energizers capitalized? To volunteer or a volunteer. I don't know. Maybe I have something wrong. And we'll come back to that. Um, gift for a budding myrmecologist. An ant farm? 
it's a myrmecologist, someone who, stu who studies ants. So someone aspiring to that role would maybe give them an ant farm as a gift. Passion project, perhaps. A something of a passion project. A labor of love. There we go. That's what it is. And the ideal course is the something. Holla braids, e.g. Um, so I think this is referring to the bread, holla bread, which is braided. And what are they, e.g.? A loaves? Look, because that is, a, that is a loaf of bread. That is a type of bread. Okay, that looks reasonable. Bowlers, bowler hats, derby hats, bowlers, derbies. Um, the uh, sort of rounded hat. Blank K, why? In Spanish, por qué, why? And ideal course, oh, plan A, I see. Plan A is the ideal course, but if something goes wrong, we may revert to plan B. Spanish city enclosed within intact medieval walls. Is it a villa? Antiquated, quaintly, oh, old with the sort of excess E, that quaint, older English E. I think so. Tushies are asses, your rear end. And food, air, and water, e.g., are needs. These are all things you need. Okay, great. So that this area of the grid has been has been filled out. Let's keep looking around. Experience derived from personal experience and observation rather than systematic research and analysis. Anecdote. That's what anecdote is, personal experience and observation. So little energizer say, oh, energizer batteries and small versions, so, well, not versions, small, a small format of battery, relatively small anyway, would be AAA, smaller than AA. There we go. So commuter option, maybe it is rail and chutzpah is not guts, but um, you've got chutzpah, you've got, why can't I see what that is? Ah, uh, that's annoying. Volunteer. So it could be a verb or a noun or an adjective, actually, a volunteer force, for instance. Um, enlist, to enlist for a military, for instance, to volunteer for it. Oh, you've got Gaul, Hutzpah. Okay. Gaul has a slightly more aggressive connotation than Hutzpah, maybe, but you could you could certainly use them in certain similar same similar contexts. Okay, so peel is to oh, it's just to sound as a bell. Sound as a bell. Is that a phrase? If you're sound as a bell, are you all taken care of and you're sort of safe and everything's fine? Or maybe you're sort of mentally composed, your sound as a bell, is that what that means? And then anyway, separately for the purpose of this clue, it also is referring to the verb, to peel. To peel is to sound, as a bell does. Um, because peel does mean sound, but not in all contexts, only, only really as pertains to bells and similar things. Okay, to recede is to ebb, as in the tide, the ocean tide. That is, this has come up three times maybe in the past week or so, I think. Ankle bones are tarsi, so the plural of tarsus, ankle bone, and help around the house. House being capitalized makes me think this is referring to the U.S. Uh, house of Representatives, the lower house of the U.S. legislature, and you often hear about house aides who are uh, who, who work for Congress people, that kind of thing. Okay, paper purchase could be a ream of paper, and to think out loud could be to muse over some subject that's on your mind. Uh, stead is lieu, so in your stead, in, well, in, in lieu of plan A, in, instead of plan A, we will execute plan B. Finales in musical terms could be codas, so the ending bit of a musical score. And to kvetch could be to carp, to complain. A bit more Yiddish, I think. We had some earlier as well. Um, words stealthily mounted to a friend while stuck in a boring conversation. <laughs> Save me, you could silently mouth to a friend over the shoulder of your interminably boring conversation partner, possibly. Total could be an adjective or a verb, or a noun, I guess, technically. The total. Oh, and actually, maybe that's what it is, the sum. Okay, I guess it was the noun, the one I thought was going to be least likely. To frolic is to romp in the, I don't know, field or something. Ancient Roman formal wear could be a toga. And this looks like maybe it includes the word scripture, Photoshop. Oh, maybe not picture. I bet Photoshop. Something of a picture. 
but what can we do with those crosses? Course for an English major, informally. Informally. And garments often seen at royal weddings. Albs from, what, a bishop or someone like that who's maybe presiding over it? A uh, course for an English major. Oh, lit crit, literary criticism. There we go. That looks that looks right. Jump duo, <laughs> jump crisscross from, I don't know, the early 90s, I want to say. Um, are they still around? I have no idea. Stayed Toasty. Uh, so that's the song jump is what that's referring to. Sorry. Uh, stayed Toasty kept warm. And to abhor something is to detest it. Pseudoscientific ability for short. Oh, maybe this isn't of a picture. Because pseudoscientific ability could be ESP extrasensory perception to uh, sort of have telepathic knowledge of someone else's thoughts, that kind of thing. Terence, who's known as the Mozart of mathematics. Terence Tao has come up once or twice before in the crossword, I think. Very famous mathematician, the Mozart of mathematics, apparently. So, hmm. This anecdote is looking strange, isn't it? With this O here, I would have expected an A for as a picture, because so far all, all of our similes have that. Clear as crystal, green as grass, uh, sound as a bell. So what am I missing? Maybe, is the anecdote wrong? That seems so strange. What about this one? American Greed Network, I've never heard of that. Uh, I don't know, it could be CNBC, just would fit here in four letters. Phrase that may be repeated in a long story. Oh, and so on and so on, you might say. Subject of Queen Mary would be a Scot. There we go. Um, resident of Scotland. And frame of mind could be your mood. An anthem contraction in the U.S. anthem could be or as in a contraction of over used in some poetic contexts. And or the ramparts we watch from that, for instance, scans that may involve dye injections in brief. MRIs, I think, inject um, dye that then shows up on the scan. Um, is it magnetic dye? I forget exactly how that works. I've had MRIs before, but I can't recall. Uh, Photoshop, let's see. So pretty as a picture, I assume this will be. So... But what is, what is not working here? What am I missing? Pretty as a picture. I mean, that's certainly a phrase, so I want that to be right. And it makes sense in the context of saying Photoshop, because if you, Photoshop is obviously a piece of software, but you can also use it as a verb. To Photoshop something is, has become a verb, meaning to modify a photograph usually, or at least often to make it look more beautiful or something like that. So to pretty something is, can also be a verb. Pretty can be a verb. So to pretty something as one would a picture is to Photoshop it. So to pretty as a picture is to Photoshop and pretty as a picture is itself also an idiomatic phrase. But but that makes that makes it seem like I have all sorts of things wrong. So what is going on? Phrase that may be repeated in a long story and then and then I suppose. So that works. Family style meal with simmering broth would be hot pot. Uh, that makes sense. Oh, anecdata. Oh, evidence derived from personal experience and observation. Oh, right. Okay. Anic data. Okay. That's a, that's a sort of portmanteau neologism, I suppose, with which I was not familiar. I don't, I think anyway. So I, I suppose what this is saying is the anecdote, which is what I had, that in itself was the personal experience and observation, but the evidence derived from it, the sort of data you're attempting to pull from that anecdote is... I suppose, referred to as anic data. Okay, well, there we go. That's new to me. Actress Ward, I've seen <laughs> seen her enough in the crossword to, to have committed her name to memory. Cella Ward. And Breakfast Centers. It's not the letter K, which was my first guess because it's 
the center of the word breakfast, but uh, no. Oh, yolk, center of the egg. Sorry, that was more obvious. <laughs> so the center of a breakfast could be the yolk of an egg. Exquisitely made basket. Oh, a, a dunk in basketball? Not sure. Shade providers. Um, let's look back up here. What do we have from this? Olympic snowboarding event. Oh, big air. I remember seeing that, I think for the first time, the most recent Winter Olympics, and I wasn't familiar with that event name, Big Air. Yeah, that struck me for that reason. One who's no fun at all, a party pooper. There we go. Hockey score is a goal, it's not simple enough. Golden calf for one could be an idol, a golden calf, a sort of false idol, classically. And tea served with a Jumbo straw is uh, boba, boba um, tea, milk milk tea, bubble tea with the tapioca, tapioca balls is served with a jumbo straw so the tapioca balls fit through the straw. Okay, stinks are odors and full house and poker slang is apparently a boat. I didn't know that, but I didn't need to because it was fully solved by the time I saw it. Olympic runner blank Felix. I do not know. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll leave somebody. One time Turkish title could be a Pasha. That was in the, I think that was in uh, the plus word the other day, which is another puzzle I solve every day on the channel in a YouTube in YouTube shorts. Shade providers are something. I'm not sure. Exquisitely made baskets, still not sure about that. Sting. It could be as here or as here, probably here to give the first word more room. Sting. Something as a B. Kristen of Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. Kristen Wiig is a, is a comic actor. Um, so I suspect that is the answer. I'm fairly certain. Where's my refund organization? The IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, allows you to check the status of your uh, tax refund online. Or by phone, I think. Sting. So let's see. This probably is as here. Could be Sting the Musician, I don't know, of the police. Intelligence organization, could be CIA or NSA, maybe. Pitch perfect question mark. Tonal? Pigs? Swine, maybe? So this could be the NSA. Uh, these, these are both pretty, very much guesses. They, I don't know if they're correct. Oh, but as per my last email is something that people sort of say to reference something maybe as a slightly passive aggressive way to uh, remind somebody they've not yet responded. Mama pigs, ah, there we go. Mama pigs are sows. So here we go. So sows crossing swine, that's a nice cross there. And this area is looking pretty good. So pitch perfect could be, I am not sure, sting and roll on Seinfeld. Elaine is one of the principal characters on the sitcom Seinfeld. And whack is to slap maybe, or are there other things that could fit there? As, I'm not sure about that. Handle at the bar. Handle of a beer sign, an ale tap. An ale tap is a handle at the bar that you would pull to uh, pour a beer, an ale. Sting. Okay, still not sure. Company that created a sonic boom and sonic being capitalized suggests we're referring to a proper noun. In this case, the character Sonic the Hedgehog created by the company Sega. So there we go. The boom referring to the enormous popularity of that character for a time. Aggressively enterprising, short. And an, an aggressively enterprising sort. Not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. And 26, two, sorry, not 2016, 2006 mockumentary with a 2012 subsequent movie film that was Borat, uh, which had a, a sequel of that name of some, I think it had a, like some extended version of that name. Okay, skilled in, if you're skilled at something, you're good at it. And an aggressively enterprising sort is... I still can't see what this is for some reason. 
Yeah, not sure. Objections or butts, maybe, or crock pot creation could be a stew. You could cook a stew in a crock pot. To make something final with up is to sew it up, I would say. And if something is elaborately decorated, it's ornate. Oh, a go-getter is an aggressively enterprising sort. Okay. Not surprised I didn't get that without the O. There we go. So to oh whack. Oh, interesting. What is that? And pitch perfect is oh no hit. Oh right. Okay, that was a completely different direction than I was expecting that to, to take. So this is a baseball thing. I suppose a you could in a punny way sort of refer to a, a pitcher as pitch perfect if they don't allow the batter to uh, hit the ball at all, to get any hits. Okay, sting. As a chip or ship, what on earth is this? Sting. Whack. Scat, is that something? If you sort of whack a, I don't know, a fly or something, are you scatting it? I'm not really sure what's going on there. Smart as a whip. Oh, smart as a whip. And to whack is to swat. Sorry. I was when I looked over here and I imagined what the saying could be. And I should have done that earlier, but I didn't. Okay. So smart as a whip. So sting. I see <laughs> that that will sting and that will smart as a whip does. If, if you were whipped, uh, the sensation of it would be a sting or a smart. You could say that smarts as a whip does. I think that's what that's referring to. And then smart as a whip, of course, is just generally speaking, a phrase referring to being very clever. All right, signifying symbol. Not sure. And to close something tightly is to shut it. Does that mean tightly necessarily? Takes it? No, it doesn't. I don't think it does. To seal something is to close it tightly. And to take an oath is to swear. So takes an oath is swears here. Signifying symbol um, mace. I don't know. I mean, there are ceremonial maces used in some contexts, but I don't think that's what this is referring to. Imagine blank peace, Ben and Jerry's flavor. Imagine, well, I mean, world peace is the obvious thing, but that's not long enough to fit here. So I wonder if there's a flavor in which several component flavors are world together in a way where you can sort of see the swirl maybe. That would be my guess about this answer. Imagine world peace. Uh, another little pun there. So what's what's the harm, you might ask? It's a victimless crime, whatever it is you're discussing. And a signifying symbol is a mark, I suppose, as in a trademark. It signifies something and you recognize it. All right, so iron. Maybe to iron clothing, so this could end in silk, maybe. Places for some piercings. Lobes or noses. I'm trying to think what would fit in five letters. Or, I uh, can't think of very many five-letter options. I'm sure I'm missing some. And it needs to be plural. Oh, interesting. It needs to be plural, but not pluralized with an S, I don't think. Because for two musically, I don't think we're going to start with S because it doesn't look like it works. So, a due, I think, is for two in a musical score. A due for two. And image on Australia's coat of arms. Is there an emu on the Australian coat of arms? I think there is. Donkey Kong, for one, is an ape, a, a video game character ape. And where, to wear white to a chill cook-off, you might say, is to tempt fate, because that, that white fabric is getting stained, for sure. Objection, objections are... Are, oh, beefs. You have an objection. You have a beef. You disagree. That, that that works. And winter setting in SF, winter setting in San Francisco would be Pacific Standard Time as opposed to Pacific Daylight Time in the summer. And a drudge is a peon, someone who's saddled with difficult work. Um, quenched is, oh, pleased as punch. That's very good. I like that one a lot. Um so here, if something quenched you, it pleased you, but it specifically pleased you as punch does because it, it satisfies your thirst specifically. Um, you wouldn't say that 
television program quenched me to mean it pleased me, uh, it really refers specifically to a narrower category of things that that might satisfy your thirst or your metaphorical thirst. Um, but in any case, pleased as punch. Very good. And then pleased as punch, of course, is generally also just a phrase. And in this case, it means you're very happy. All right. It's, it's time connector. It's so usually when you see these hyphenated phrases and then connector, usually that means we're looking for a word that connects its and time. So we're looking for something that serves as a connection between those words. So it's about time, you could say. There we go. That is a phrase. And tushies are bums. Oh, so we had, we had a different one somewhere else uh, along the same lines. So we've echoed that. Dealing with that right now, I'm on it. And the campus with the zip code 90095. Um, well, nine is West Coast. So I I wonder if this is... Oh, and 90210 is Beverly Hills. I bet this is UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles, because, uh, because of the television program, which I've actually never seen, believe it or not. Never seen a single episode of... Beverly Hills 90210, but I certainly remember the name of it. And therefore I know that zip code, which is a US postal code, of course. And uh, so this is probably the answer. Uh, Marathon, so University of California, Los Angeles is UCLA. Marathon segment is a mile. So miles one, what, 27th or something of a marathon maybe. And collared shirt accessory is a stay, a sure, uh, right. This came up in a, in a puzzle I solved within the last several months, and it took me ages to remember what that was called, the little collar stay that you can insert into your collar to keep it stiff, I suppose. And then place to swim or play b-ball is the Y, the um, YMCA, uh, kind of recreational and sports center. So there we go. Let's finish off this puzzle if we can. Blank Alto, Palo Alto is a... Uh, very affluent neighborhood in a uh, well, city, I suppose, in Northern California, associated with sort of tech people. Uh, multiple choice and, and Stanford University. Uh, I guess that's what it was associated with um, more frequently before the sort of tech boom. Uh, multiple choice choice is an offer. Multiple choice choice. Other, right, you could say is the answer A, B, C, D, or other, for instance. Places for some piercings. Oh, septa, as in plural of septum. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, yes, we did get a pluralization with an A there. As expected, campfire remnant could be ash from a campfire. And shade providers are sun hats. There we go. All right. That works. Exquisitely made basket. Maybe it is a dunk. I don't know. Um, what have we not? Is there anything we've not yet looked at? Tickler's targets are something spots, maybe? Not sure. Soaks in hot water is bathes or... Um, not sure. Probably does end with an S. Da oh, to down B-52s, say. Is that... That's a shot. I mean, B-52 is a is a an aircraft, a bomber, but also is a is a shot of something. Do shots as in in a bar. And then I'm not sure I'm gonna need all the crosses for this one. Oh, succeeded at musical chairs. I should have looked at this earlier. Sat. If you sat if you sit down, you manage to in a chair anyway, you've managed to succeed at musical chairs. And so uh, Allison Felix or Allison probably. Okay, there we go. Let's see the Kroner. And to iron is to smooth as one does to silk. To smooth as silk, to iron something, is to smooth it as you would silk. And of course, smooth as silk is a general phrase, meaning something went perfectly well according to plan. Maybe plan A, the ideal plan, was followed. Muscle contraction is it could be a spasm. And Kaufman, who co-created Friends, oh, I have no idea. I do not know. Ancient Mesoamerican civilization, the Olmec civilization would be an ancient Mesoamerican civilization. This looks like armpits. Yes, tickler's targets are armpits, famously ticklish uh, part of the body. And 
soaks in hot water, and setting for ultra close up photos. Macro photography is also is ultra close up. Stock launch in brief is an IPO, an initial public offering of a, a formerly private company being listed on a public stock exchange. Oh, soaks in hot water is steeps as tea. There we go. There we go. So Marta Kaufman must have co-created friends. Okay. Uh, fair enough. And is that the answer? Yes. There we have it. That was the Sunday crossword, a big grid with a fairly sort of linguistically nuanced uh, theme, I would say, in the sense that we're <laughs> the, the, the idea of the theme, the concept of the theme is predicated on having very specific, referring to a very specific sense of a word that needs context in order to um, get the proper meaning. So to bus, you know, to bus is to clear dishes and plates. But most people, when you see the word bus, first you'll think of a, a city bus or, you know, it's some, some, something related to that. That would be the more common meaning. And so then when you think about busing plates, you, you specify, oh, to, and in the case of this puzzle, we're specifying it in this funny sort of simile way where we use existing phrases and we invert their meaning. So to clear dishes as crystal, as you might with the fine crystal. Uh, this one is especially, I think, opaque, ironically, because, you know, most of us don't use crystal uh, dining service very often, I would think. Uh, but there we go. That's how it works. And then similarly, photosynthes to photosynthesize is to green as grass does. Green as grass. To peel is to sound as a bell does. Um, and sound as a bell, which I suspect probably means kind of mentally composed. I think that's probably what that means by sound. Um, in, in the, sorry, I mean in the idiomatic phrase, sound is a bell. Uh, to Photoshop is to pretty, as you might do to a picture, pretty as a picture. Um, to sting is to smart as a whip would. And smart as a whip, of course, is the phrase there. Uh, to iron is to smooth as you would silk. And smooth as silk is the phrase. And finally, uh, quenched, to have been quenched is to have been pleased as punch might please you. And pleased as punch is the phrase. So it does require some <laughs> requires some some thinking to get there, uh, I think, to 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 fully understand each of these. At least I had to sort of very intentionally uh, think about the context of these words. But a very, a very interesting, extremely linguistically specific theme, I think. Uh, it's well done. It's, it's I, I wonder how people will feel about this theme because it's certainly not one that that jumps out at you necessarily in the way that that sometimes themes do. Um, but it is interesting. It was well constructed, and we were able to get these very long, these relatively long multi-word answers out of these single one-word question mark clues, which I think is is a nice achievement. Um, so let me know how you felt about this one. I'm very curious to know. Uh, a fun Sunday crossword as far as I'm concerned. And um, with this longer Sunday grid, I don't have time to uh, check the comments today, but I will, I, I'm going to try and do that more often than I had, but I know I'd sort of fallen out of it. I'm going to try and do it more often, but today I don't quite have the time. Um, but I will be back tomorrow with a Monday puzzle, a much quicker, faster solving uh, themed crossword to kick off the solving week. I do hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care. Bye.